The Great Muskrat Migration. In 85, I worked for a large family cattle ranch in Northern Lake County, Oregon. For their winter grazing, they had two large slices of a, of a pie-shaped grassy basin some 10 miles in circumference. It was called Silver Lake because every quarter century or more, it filled up with water. This was due to a naturally recurring phenomenon, which for want of a better terminology, you could call climate change. That winter we had wet snow and dry snow, snow on snow in the mountains, snow in the hills, and snow across the desert. In the spring we had rain and more rain. The water came raging down the creeks, washed through the Palina Marsh, and rushed down a dry stream bed under Highway 31 like a mighty river. In short order, a basin with short grass and sand dunes had been transformed into a massive three to four foot deep lake as far as the eye could see. By the next fall, there were patches of tules as high as 10 feet across this vast expanse. It was an Oregon Everglades. A group of hunters from Ohio, funded by a Great Lakes shipping magnet, showed up with four mobile homes and two swamp boats. They set up on the north shore of Silver Lake, built a pier for their boats, and set about leasing shoreline from the ranchers, who were more than happy for the cash to buy additional hay they would need. The idea was to bring in high roller clients from the Midwest for duck hunting, swamp boating, and beaver and muskrat trapping. The head honcho explained to me that there was a great demand for wild game cuisine in Michigan and Ohio, and not just venison and pheasant, but bear, beaver, and yes, muskrat. Well, they were in the right place because Silver Lake had become muskrat heaven. As a show of hospitality, these affable Ohioans invited the ranchers and buckaroos to a big feed. The main course? You guessed it, slow-baked muskrat. It is important to note that the eating of small mammals is generally taboo in ranch country. Too many diseases transmitted by biting insects, tularemia and leptospirosis to name a couple. However, a gentleman goes a long way not to offend the host. I tried a taste or two of this dusky, greasy meat. It had, how shall I say it, a musky taste. Then I went for the chicken. If there is one constant in the world, it is climate change. The next winter we had a moderate snowpack with an average runoff. The summer was typically dry. The winter after that, the ski resorts were hurting and the desert ranchers were getting their water trucks tuned up. By year four, there were only a few ponds left in the middle, and the ranch hands were repairing fences. A fellow buckaroo had picked up a couple of Russian wolfhound greyhound crosses to run down coyotes on the lake bed. The coyotes had no doubt grown weary of muskrat dining and had set their sights on tastier baby beef. The Ohioans took their swamp boats and headed for swampier pastures. The pier eventually blew down, and the vacant mobile homes set out in the sagebrush for a couple of decades until someone finally hauled them off. During the final year of this great dryback of Silver Lake, I would be riding across the desert in a valley a good way south when my horse would inevitably snort and shy off as a muskrat came waddling by through the sagebrush. My enduring image from those days is that of an instinct-driven ball of bristly hair with a long black trailing tail migrating across the land of jackrabbits and antelope towards the marshes of Summer Lake or the Chihuahua Can with profound resignation. <laughs>